The Bible says, my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder, do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. Hello everyone. This is the holy hour and welcome to the holy hour. The holy hour is the time with God and it is a place for salvation. We are bringing the gospel to your homes, to all nations, all countries, race, nationality, ministries, social platforms, cell phones, iPad, because there is no limitation in the gospel. There is no distance in the gospel. There is no distance in prayers. There is no distance in the word of God. So we are bringing the gospel to your homes and to all nations through this platform. And today we believe that you will be blessed by the ministration of today and the word that the Lord has prepared for us. So I call on all fellow viewers to open your mind, open your soul, open your spirit. Because it's by the spirit, it is by the mind that he, and when you believe that you get the impartation of the word of God. And that impartation change or will bring change in your whole situation, in your unanswered prayers in everything you're going through in life when your spirit is free for the spirit of God to take control so today the Lord had a word for us or messages for us but there's a theme that the Lord gave me for this ministration for today the theme that will bless us that will change us that will make us whole born again righteous and put us in that rightful path with the almighty God this is the place of refuge salvation is refuge the most high God is refuge and if you are watching the holy hour this moment this present moment know you are at the place of refuge no, you found refuge. No, you found answers to your unanswered problems, unanswered questions, unanswered prayers, fasting, and all the things that you've been waiting from God. You will get your answer from this broadcast and from this platform. Before we go into the ministration for today and to see what the Lord has prepared for us or the message that the Lord has sent me to deliver to the nations, to all homes. I will first of all start with the prayer. To thank the Almighty God for making it possible this day for us all to see. And as we go into His Word, we go into His Word with 
open spirit. Please bow your head and pray with me as we lift up our mind and soul and our spirit unto the Most High God. Father God, Father for Lord Jesus Christ and Savior, Lord, we call upon you this precious day that you've made us to see. This day that you've created, according to Psalm 118, 24. For this is the day you have made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we lift up this holy hour unto your throne of grace. That let your spirit, let your presence flow over us. Flow from this sanctuary. Flow to the people out there watching. In nations, in various homes, in various communities. In various social platforms, let your spirit flow and touch them, Father, and change their situation. Because the Bible says, the righteous run unto you and they are safe. They have run unto you, Father, into this holy hour and they are safe. Take control of the word, take control of, you, of the ministration. And let the anointed flow upon your people. Let it not to flow upon this sanctuary. Let it not to flow upon this environment. Let it not to flow upon this arena. Father, we thank you. Because we know all the glory and adoration come unto your holy name. This day and forevermore. And let your children, your people, be blessed by your word, by your spirit, by your presence. And let the glory and the adoration always be yours and always come unto your holy name. Let the ministration this moment be a sweet perfume unto your holy name, a sweet aroma, a sweet perfume. Father, we thank you because without you we can go no further. But this moment we say, Blessed be your holy name, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. In the highest. In Jesus mighty name your son. Our Lord we have prayed. Amen. The Lord said to Joshua. In the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. The Lord said. Before I even go into the scripture. I will just call. On us all. To go to our Bible. Because the Bible is God, is the word of God, and is God himself. So if you have your Bible with you now, turn to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. The Lord said, said to Joshua, Meditate this book day and night. Or you can say morning, afternoon, evening. For you to prosper and for you to have good fortune. So if you have your Bible with you, lift it up. Because for you to prosper, you have to meditate the word of God day and night. As often as possible for you to prosper and have good fortune. I will read it so that we get the scripture as it is. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 The Lord says to Joshua For this book of the law Shall not depart Out of the mouth For thou shalt meditate This day and night Thou May observe to do according To all that is written In it For then Thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. This is good success. And we meditate it day and night. And that is the foundation of Christianity. So, we will go to the scripture that the Lord has prepared for us today. This was just an introduction of the essence 
of the Bible and the Word of God. Like the song says, My Bible, my Bible, and I, my Bible, my Bible, and I, what a wonderful treasure God gave without measure. We are traveling together, my Bible and I. Amen. So today, the Lord want to speak to us the team that the Lord gave me to share with the world today. And to all fellow viewers, the team is sin and sacrifice. Or you can say sins and sacrifices that is the word the Lord laid in my mind some weeks ago not today like a month ago he gave me this word I preached it somewhere else and he said preach it again and again let my people know some differentiation between their sins and their sacrifice so today, we're going to be examining this team within the appropriate hour that we have to be here. Sin and sacrifice. We will go directly to some scriptures in the Bible. And the first scripture we're going to see today is Exodus 20. Exodus 20 is the most popular scripture. I think all of us know it already. It's very popular. It talks about the Ten Commandments and um, yeah, and many other things. But we have to correlate it now to see what God is trying to bring to mankind, what God is trying to tell mankind. So Exodus 20, we will look into that. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 to 26, we will look into that. Second Samuel verse 12, uh, chapter 12, Verse 14 to 20 and Numbers 27 to 12. We will cross examine those scriptures in the Bible and we we'll correct them to get the message of God. And not only the message, but the impartation and the revolution of what God is trying to teach us today from His Word. So, going to the first scripture, Exodus chapter 20. I'm going to read it. Exodus chapter 20. And I read in the name of the Most High God. I'll read from verse 1 to 17. And God spoke all this word saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt make unto thee, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of any likeness, or anything that is in heaven above, or that is in earth beneath. Or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. <coughs> Excuse me. For I, the Lord thy God, I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third, fourth generation, and then that hate me and swing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain for the Lord will not hold him guilty that take his name in vain verse 8 remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy verse 9 six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, and it is, and in it thou 
shall not do any work. Nor that maid servant, nor that, that cattle, nor that strangers, that is written, that is within thy gate. For in the six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and he rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God gave thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet thy maid servant, nor thy maid their maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. We'll go to First Samuel chapter fifteen, verse twenty-two to twenty-six. First Samuel fifteen twenty two to twenty six. <coughs> Excuse me. First Samuel chapter fifteen. I read in the name of the Lord. Verse 22 to 26, I read. And Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of ram. For rebellious is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he shall also reject thee from being king. Verse 24. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy works, because I fear the people and obey their voices. Verse 25. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected thee from being king over Israel. Let's turn to 2 Samuel 12. Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 14 to 20. Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 14 to 20. I read in the name of the Lord. How be it? Because by this deed, Thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare, with, bare unto David, and he was sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted. And went into and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of the house arose, went to him to raise him up from the earth. But he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. 
and the servant of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was alive, we spoke unto him, and he would not listen, he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that this child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servant, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he came into his own house and when he required, they set bread before him and he did eat. <coughs> we now visit the last chapter for today by the will of God if he doesn't give us another chapter in the course of the ministration because he does that often while you're preaching you keep giving the words giving the words giving the words giving the words so we'll go to Numbers chapter 20 verse 7 to 12 the book of Numbers chapter 20 verse 7 to verse 12 I read in the name of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather thou the assembled together. Thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before thy eyes, and he shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so Thou shalt give the congregation and their beast drink. And Moses took the rock from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Ye now, ye rebels, <laughs> must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he sought the rock twice and water came out and abundantly and the congregation drank and their beast also and the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given thee these are the words of the Lord for us this day and we give him the glory and adoration thanks be to God the theme like I earlier said from the beginning is sin and sacrifice sin and sacrifice. God wants to speak to us the difference between our sins and our sacrifices. And I've cross reference. He gave me this this uh, various biblical texts to cross reference. There are many, but this stands as an example of others in the Bible. To cross reference, these are men of God in Exodus. That was Moses with the children of Israel. Up to this point. The Bible records that Moses was the only man that spoke to God as you could speak to your mom, you could speak to your wife, you could speak to your child, you could speak to a friend. And when he died, they said the man of God had died. And nobody spoke with God in a close range or as close as Moses did. Everybody knows the history of Moses, the story of Moses in the Bible. The man that God used to free his people from Israel. All the sacrifices that Moses did. In the wilderness. In the burning bush. In the desert with the children of Israel. In front of the Red Sea. He did it. He was the man of God. We are coming to the point. 
where God wants us to examine today. Going back to 1 Samuel chapter 15, it was the king, King Saul. That was the king God has chosen for his people Israel. Even though he wasn't a king according to God's will, but he chose him. His spirit was with him. He was anointed. He served God in his own capacity. The king saw sin. Moses sin. Let's go to Second Samuel that we saw. David, the one after my heart, the one after God's heart. See, he killed Uriah and took his wife Bathsheba, went into her, impregnated her before the Almighty. He sinned, not only double uh, one sin, double sin. Murder, he murdered, and again adultery. He sinned. Now. This is the point that God wants to hit on us, his children. Be you a believer, be you a Buddhist or any faith or any tradition, that you believe in the Most High God. God is simply saying, the message is simply saying, God is simply saying, He will visit every act of us accordingly. Our sacrifices cannot cover up for our sins. That is the message for today. Let me hit the note according to the direction from God. Our sacrifices cannot cover up for our sins. And that is why we fail today on earth. We fail today as ministers of God. We fail today as children of God. We fail today as, as, as believers in the gospel. We cover our sins with our sacrifices, but that, that does not please God. It does not please God. It does not please God. God is simply, uh, simply saying, our sacrifices cannot cover up for our sins. No matter how anointed we are, no matter how, how, how divine we are, no matter how religious we are, no matter how we preach, no matter whether we are an apostle, you are an evangelist, a pastor, a, 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 a bishop, our sacrifices cannot cover for our sins. Meaning, when you sin, you repent of your sins and don't say, I'm the pastor, I'm the man of God, I'm the woman of God, I'm the bishop, I'm anointing. Oh God, I've done this for you, I've done this for you, I'm doing this for you, I will do this for you. And you forget to repent of your sins. You take your sacrifices and think you can cover it up with your sins. It cannot go. That's why we we'll go to the book of Exodus. Exodus. <coughs> Excuse me. Exodus 20, we just saw the Ten Commandments. God laid it out good and bad. The step to follow and the step not to follow. Do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not bear false witness, do not worship another God. So you cannot go and worship another God. You cannot go and commit adultery. You cannot go and fornicate. You cannot go and steal because you are anointed. Because you are a bishop. Because you are the most powerful man of God. Because God has anointed you in a big ministry. Because you are a child of God. You are a preferred child of God. God will not reconcile the two. Meaning, no matter the sacrifices you do for God, your sins will still stand there against you. That is why he gave us example in, first, in uh, Numbers 20 about Moses. Moses did the most tremendous 
spiritual battles and wars in the scripture in the Bible. But he did not see the promised land because of what? Disobedience, sin. He fell short of the glory of God. These are the examples that God has given us. This is a man of God. All sacrifices he has done for God. He freed by the Spirit of God. He freed God's people from Pharaoh, from slavery, 400 years. The Red Sea. He split it by the power of God. But he sinned. Because of his sin, God told him what? Come and stand in the hill of the mountain, on, on top of the mountain. You will only see the promised land, but you will not get there. Very aching. Upon all the hard work that Moses had done, he wouldn't believe in that. Just at the point of entering, oh, shoto bashita. Only at the point of entering Canaan, the promised land, he fell short of the glory of God because of his sin. You see, your sacrifices cannot cover up for your sins. That is what God is telling us. We don't take God for granted because we are anointed. Because we are the children of God. Because we are called for nations, to nations. Because we have ministries, big ministries. You have to repent of your sins. Why are you serving God? Why are you doing your sacrifices for God? Moses did not see the promised land because of his sin. The people pushed him to sin and he missed the promised land, which he would have loved to be there after all hard work. He missed it. Sin and sacrifice. Meaning, when you sin, repent of your sin. Don't say, I am this, I am that for God. And he will look into those sacrifices that I do for him and forget about the evil that I do behind. Or evil that people do behind. God is simply telling us, he will visit each act that we do on earth accordingly. Each act you do, he visits it according. Any act of evil, God will visit it. Whether you're anointed or you're not anointed. Whether you're the most powerful man of God or not. The most beloved child of God or not. The most powerful Christian or not. God will visit every act of, 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 of mankind. That is what he's simply telling us. He will visit every act. And we should not take him for granted. We should not take things as well for granted. Because he will visit us accordingly. Again, our sacrifices can never, ever cover up for our sins. If not, Moses would have seen the promised land. Upon all he did, that you know, that I know, he did not see the promised land. Because he sinned against God. King Saul! A man God chose for his people. He seen the prophet told him, Prophet Samuel told him, wait for me seven days before you perform the sacrifice. He did not wait. Seven days came and passed. He went and performed the sacrifice because the Philistines were putting so much pressure, they were coming with so much force and attack. He went and performed. The sacrifice without the prophet. And when the prophet told him to wait for him, he sinned against God. And when the prophet came and, and saw what he has done, he said, What? Obedience is better than sacrifice than to happen than the fact of ram. This day, because you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, because you have sinned against him, my was the fact that you are the king of God's people. Why was the fact that you are the king of God's people? You are the leader of God's people. You have done this for God. You will cease to be the king of Israel as from this point. Your sin. Your sin.
sacrifice. Saul's sacrifices were there. He was a king. He was not, he was not the best of kings, of course. We know that. But for the time that he was king, he was king. God anointed him. The spirit of God was in him. Until God rejected him, that is when God took his spirit out of King Saul. But as long as he was still the king of Israel, the spirit of God was in, was in him. But because of his sins, he missed the kingdom. He missed it. Because of his sins, he missed the kingdom. His sacrifices could not cover up for the good works that he has done so far. God visited him accordingly. And from that point upwards, like the prophet Samuel said to him, God has chosen someone according, uh, according to his heart. And that was King David. And that was the end of King Saul. He lost the kingdom because of what? Sin. He knew. King Saul knew. As a king, I've done this for God's people. So, if I disobey and do this sacrifice, God will look at the sacrifices that I've been doing. God will look at my, 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 my good works. And don't punish me. He will not. He will not. What is God telling us today? Whether you are a preacher, whether you clean the house of God, whether you sing in church, whether you are a prophet, whether you are a prophetess, your sacrifices cannot cover up for your sins. God is calling us to repent of our sins and be conscious of our sins and don't mix it up with our sacrifices. Because this is where we fall short of the glory of God. You are a child of God, you fornicate. You are a child of God, you steal. You are a child of God, you go to church, you sing in the choir, you are a choir mistress or you are a choir master, but you have other things that you do around that does not glorify God. You are an elderly church, immediately after church, before you even reach home after church, you are seeing that marabou somewhere at the corner there for more magic. God is seeing it. God is visiting you. It's not because you are the elder in church and you are going to serve another God where he said, serve no God except me because I'm a jealous God. And we think because we are elders in church, God will see my elder sheep and forgive the evil that I do behind. He will not. He will visit us. He will visit you more seriously, more than even what we can ever imagine. Separate your sin from your sacrifices. Serve God diligently. Repent. Avoid sins. Avoid evil. That way we walk. You walk. I walk in righteousness before God. <clears throat> it is righteousness and obedience that makes us to walk right before God. It's not sacrifices. It's not our sacrifices. And that is why many fall short. Like I've given all these examples in the Bible. Moses fell short. Thinking that because of his sacrifices, God will have mercy on him. Even with his little disobedience. But God did not. So the same thing. Going back to King David. In his adultery and his murder act. He wept. He fasted. Fast, fasted. He did not eat. Even his servants saw him. The prophet came and told him, the child will die. There's no point for you to fast. He fasted. Went and seek the face of the Lord. This was the man that killed Goliath. The little boy that killed Goliath. With the power of God in him. And with the anointing of God in him. God could not still pardon him. What happened? The child died. The child died. The child died. 
David fasted, cried, see the face of the Lord. The child died. The child died. And when the child died, what happened? He woke up, dressed up well, went and worshipped the Lord. He ate and went and worshipped the Lord. Why? He knew the answer himself. He realized it himself that his sins or his sacrifices, his sins will be visited. And God visited his sins. His sacrifices will not cover up for his sins even though he was the one after God's heart. It did not cover up. The child died. And from there, David learned his lesson. And David is one of that, one of those men of God in the Bible that did everything possible not to repeat his sin or his sins the second time. So what he did the first time, he tried not to repeat it the second time. He did it once and he repented. Like the Bible tells us in Psalm 15, 51, where David cried, pleaded before God for God to clean him with his son. Take not that Holy Spirit away from me and cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. But renew unto me the joy of my salvation. He realizes his sin. He realizes that which he has done that has not glorified God. He's repented. And even when the child died, if you continue to read, David took Bathsheba and said, we have sinned against the Lord. We cannot compromise it with our sacrifices. I cannot compromise it because I killed Goliath. I cannot compromise it because I'm the one after God's heart. Let's go and make it right before God. Let's go and make it right before God. And the Bible says what? They went. David and Bathsheba went and slept. And slept before the Lord and wept and repented. Now, this is a point here. What are we trying to make up? In our behavior, in our manners, hiding our sins, not seeking righteousness and repentance and as, as, as God wants it to be. So what are we trying to make up? We cannot make up anything. That's the answer. We cannot make up anything with God. God says in Exodus 20 that we read, that he will visit the iniquities of the parents upon the generation to the generation to the third and to the fourth generation. So you know that whatever you do today that does not glorify the name of God, if you think you will go untouched by God, it will follow your generation. It will follow your children. It will follow your children's children and children's children to come. He will visit it. He will visit your iniquities. He will visit your transgressions. He will visit every sin. God is calling us to righteousness. God is calling us to sanctification. It is through righteousness that we can see God. It is through righteousness that God can answer our prayers. It is through righteousness that God can answer your prayers. Whatever you're doing out there that does not glorify the name of God, receive this message today and repent and wash off your hands of every evil because it will block your entrance into your promised land. It will block the answers to your questions or to your, to, 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 yeah, to your questions that you've asked God. It will block the answers to your prayers that you've prayed to God. It will lead you through the to the path of evil. We live today as children of God, ministers of God, we do things and 
think it is for the glory of God. But it is not for the glory of God. That's why the Bible says in the, in the, in the New Testament, God says what? You've cast the devils in my name. You've healed the sick. You've delivered the captive. But I don't know you. Because you did not repent of your sins. Because you took my glory when you were doing all these miracles. Because you do not walk in righteousness. God is calling us to walk in righteousness and sanctification before him. To walk in righteousness and sanctification before him. There's no amount of sacrifice that we will do. There's no amount of preaching that we will do. There's no amount of prayers that we will do. There's no amount of deliverance that we will do. There's no amount of healing that we will do. There's no amount of preaching, outreach ministry that we will do. As sacrifices to God. When our sins still stand before us. Our sin stands against us. They are before us. But it stands against us. Before God. God looks at the sins and look at the good work that you've done. He says, I cannot compromise. I cannot compromise. You've done this, 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 you've done this. I cannot compromise. Do you know why God does not compromise? God is saying this to us right now. And these are some of the reasons why prayers are not answers. Because Satan, the accuser, is always there to accuse. You prayed a good prayer, you fasted a good, a, a, a good, a, you did a good fast. And the answers are not coming. Satan, the accuser, is there. Oh, you will not bless him? Okay. Look at him. Look at where he's just coming from. Oh, you want to answer that prayer? Look at what he just did. You didn't see it? And God always answers his name. He will not go any further to answer that prayer. Until you, you repent of that thing that you just did that has not glorified his name. So Satan has taken it and accused you before God. And the answers are not coming. Repentance is not an, e e an, an easy thing. To repent of our sins is not an, e is not an easy thing. Of kind, all kinds of sins. This is not only stealing, adultery, or fornication, or what lies telling. Sorcerers, too. Witchcrafts, witches, and wizards. You cannot be a witch, you cannot be a wizard, and you sit in the first, the pews in the church, the first row, you sit there. Or maybe you are even the pastor of that church, or the leader in the choir, or the leader of the men's group, or the women group. God is seeing us all. God is seeing you. God is seeing the earth. And that is why he gave me this message. And the simple reason is this. He told me that many of us who call him father, and he calls us children, we are missing it. Because we are missing our sacrifices and our sin. And we look at our sacrifices as, as repentance. Repentance is repentance. Sacrifices are sacrifices. Go and repent and confess of your sins. So that God can have mercy on you. And don't take your sacrifices or your work in the house of God, your work in the ministry, to cover up for your abominations. And that is the message God gave me like four, four weeks ago. That many of my people cover up their sins cover up with their abomination, with their sacrifices, the thing they offer to me. 
they don't repent, they don't change, they don't stay away from evil. And they call themselves children of God. They call themselves pastors. They call themselves uh, 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 preachers, leaders, evangelists. And for real, God said to me, those are the people I have chosen. I have chosen them even, anointed them for my glory. But yet, I don't get the glory because their sins, abominations, still stands there before me. I don't get the glory. I'm wasting my anointing. I'm wasting my power in them. I'm wasting my spirit in them. My spirit cannot flow. My presence cannot flow. That is what God told me. That is what God told me. Sin is sin. Abomination is an ab is, is, is abomination. Evil is evil. Do not compromise God. That's another point to take home. Do not compromise God and do not take God for granted. That is the message he told me. That my people take me for granted. My people take me for granted. Because they are anointed. Because I call them my children and they call me their God. They take me for granted. They compromise my glory. They compromise my name. They compromise my spirit. They compromise my word. Because they think when I see them in the anointing, I will forget the abomination. And they keep going. In the evil way and they keep going 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 in the evil way anointing does not cover up for sins fellow believers anointing does not cover up for sins no matter how you're anointed by the most high god no matter how loved you are by god Anointing does not cover up for sin, does not cover up for unrighteousness, does not cover up for abomination. That is the message from God to us today. That bring this light to my people. That anointing of me, be your God, you be my children, will not cover up for your abomination. It's clear. We just saw some scriptures. But if we go back to history in the Bible, the children of Israel, God himself said what? They are a, or they were a stiff-necked generation, stubborn, rebellious generation. Did their sins, did their righteousness cover up for their sins? No. Each time they commit evil, each time they commit an abomination, God punished them. God will punish them and they will repent. They will change. They will make repentant sacrifices sin sacrifices they'll be conscious of their sins because they know they've done wrong and God will forgive them why? because they know their sins and their permission cannot cover up and each time Israel was in sin each time Israel was in sin God was not there they will cry they will look for God they will weep they will search for him he would never be there. He was never found. When they were in sin, when they were in, a, in abomination, what is God telling us again right now? And keep your sacrifice aside. When you are in abomination, when you are in sin, when sin has become an iniquity, has become part of your life, and you cannot separate from sin. I, the Lord, I will not hear your prayers. I will not hear your prayers. It's clear and clear. It blocks the 
prayers. It blocks the prayers. It's like someone who has not even prayed. And this is the point where God always drew my attention when he speaks to me. <coughs> he tries to make the difference between believers and those who are out there in the world. The gospel, like now that we're listening, we are listening. It's not only for us believers, it's for those who are out there in the world. It's to go and fish for those who are out there in the world with the word of God. And God said this. My people my people they don't know me. They don't know me. Because if they know me they won't compromise me for anything. They won't compromise me for sin. They won't compromise me for abomination. They won't compromise me for witchcraft. They won't compromise me with molten images. They won't compromise me with serving demigods. They won't compromise me with unrighteousness. They won't compromise me with unholiness. Because I am the most high God. The holy of the holiest. But my people, they don't understand me. And he brought me to the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 15. Revelation chapter 1, verse 15. Revelation chapter 1 verse 15 God said Those that I, I love most I chastise Those that I love most I chastise And he says what? Either you are warm Or either you are cool But don't be lukewarm Lukewarm it's when sin stands this way, sacrifice stands this way, and you want to compromise God in the middle. He says what? I just us. I just us. I cast away. Either you are cold or either you are warm. But don't be lukewarm. Because I'll chastise you. And he says again in the same revelation. That as more, uh, the more. I love you the more I chastise you that's the more I train you the more I culture you the more I build you the more I want you to repent the more I want you to be righteous the more I want you to be holy the more I want you to be sanctified the more I want you to glorify my holy name from your life your character your living your well-being the more I want you to glorify me, the more I love you. So the more we are to God, the more also he demands from us. Righteously, not sacrifice. Listen, people of God. Listen, people of God. The more we are to God, the more he wants us righteously and not sacrificially that's where we miss it we think our business or our life with God or Christ is it's just doing the things which I already quoted going to church serve God sing in the choir be a believer read the Bible no. 
the more we add to God, the more righteousness He demands from us. The more purity He demands from us. The more of sanctification He demands from us. The more purification He demands from us. So the more God loves, the more He chastises. Because what? He wants you to be perfect. He wants you to be correct. Because we stand, we stand as an advocate for God out there. I stand there as an advocate for God. You stand there as an advocate for God. So the more He loves me, He loves you. The more He demands holiness from me. Holiness from you and not sacrifices. Please separate it. This is a preaching, this is a revolution, this is not a battle against the enemy because the word of God is divided in many dimensions. The times I will stand here and you will know that day I came for the enemy. Today I came for you and I, children of God. God is speaking to us. Even those that are backslided, God is calling you back. God is calling you back. God is calling you back. This preaching, this ministration is for believers, children of God, those who want to give their life to Christ, those who are already in Christ, those who are already children of God, they call themselves children of God. This is for them. So far, so far, it's not for the devil. The day I will come here for the devil, you won't recognize me anymore. Oh, for sure. Mark my words. The day I will stand here for the devil, you won't recognize me. But this was just a message that God gave me. Say, preach this message to my people because they compromise me. They compromise my spirit. They compromise my glory. They compromise my presence. They compromise my word, my existence. Because they claim they know me. I know them. And they hide in sin. They hide in abomination. They hide in witchcraft. They hide in juju houses. They hide in fornication. They hide in adultery. They hide in evil plants. And they think they can blaspheme me. You cannot blaspheme God. I cannot blaspheme God. Nobody can blaspheme God. He will visit us accordingly. So this is a call, a wake up call. This message is a wake up call. Wake up from your sins. Wake up from your abominations. Wake up from your witchcrafts. Wake up from your evil practices. So fellow believers, this is the message for God, from God for us today. Sin and sacrifices. And if you want to take home the point, which I can quickly recap, because we are at the end of this ministration. Do not compromise God, His glory, His anointing, His spirit. Because of the sacrifices that you do for him. Do not cover up. That's point one. Point two. Do not cover up your sins. With your sacrifices. Or the good works. That you do in the house of God. The scripture has just proven us wrong. That, we, that it doesn't work. Point three. How to channel your prayers before God. You channel your prayer before God in righteousness, in holiness, in sanctification, and not through your sacrifices. Some people will pray and say, oh, Father God, remember me, I did this for you. Remember me, I did this. Yes, God will answer those prayers if the act that you did, you did them in righteousness. Like Nehemiah, in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah said, remember me, O Lord, for good. Three times in the book of Nehemiah, because he was a good man, and he did good for God in righteousness. That you can bring it before God. 
But not that you will bring your sacrifice before God and you have abomination on the left, you have your sacrifice on the right, or right and left. So, take all this message, or these messages, or these points to, to, to build your spiritual life in Christ. To build you up, to mold you up. So that you grow in the fullness of Christ and enjoy the fullness of Him. This is just the beginning. Many more scriptures will come. Many more words and, and messages from the Lord will come. And I will share with you all in this very platform. And I'm really sorry to say that we are at the end of this ministration. God bless you and I would love to continue it as the Spirit leads me. But we will have another time, another holy time like this with God. So God bless you in your homes, in your cities, in your countries, wherever you are. Be blessed and walk in that path of righteousness for the glory of God is at hand. Once again, this was a holy hour and be holy for the glory of the Most High God. Thank you. The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. 